Thank you for having me. I'm going to start off with a deck of cards, um, which I've previously memorized. Uh, ten of diamonds, queen of hearts, nine of clubs, five of clubs, six of spades, king of clubs, six of hearts, ten of spades, four of spades, jack of hearts, king of diamonds, jack of spades, eight of diamonds, queen of diamonds, jack of diamonds, ace of spades, Two of diamonds, four of diamonds, seven of diamonds, five of diamonds, jack of clubs, three of clubs, eight of spades, king of hearts, nine of diamonds, five of spades, three of spades, uh, nine of hearts, seven of hearts, two of hearts, seven of clubs, ace of diamonds, ace of clubs, ten of hearts, three of diamonds, five of hearts, eight of clubs, Queen of clubs, nine of spades, six of clubs, seven of spades, three of hearts, uh, ace of hearts, two of clubs, uh, eight of hearts, four of clubs, two of spades, four of hearts, six of diamonds, king of spades, uh, queen of spades, and ten of clubs. Yes? Yeah. We go. So please don't forget this talk, okay? If you forget anything, that's fine, just not this talk, all right? Uh, we'll help you, hopefully, by making it memorable. Uh, my name is Nelson Dellis. I am uh, the current and three-time USA memory champion. I'll tell you about that competition in a little bit. Um, Alzheimer's is very important to me. That's why I got started. My grandmother had it, so I'm a big activist for Alzheimer's disease research. Um, Climb for Memory is a foundation I started. I'll talk about that in a bit and I love to climb, I'm a mountaineer. Um, I started getting into this and the memory world because of my grandmother, um, which this lovely lady right there, she had Alzheimer's and passed away in 2009. And I had gotten into memory in 2008, I actually moved to Chicago, uh, take a year off school and wanted to just try things out, do something on my own. And I read about memory techniques and these competitions, and I got pretty interested in it. Um, she passed away the next year, and that really got me thinking about my own brain health and what that meant for me in the future, and should I be doing something about that now? So I s took that to a whole new level. I um, started to train for this USA Memory Championship. I almost won in 2010. I, f I flubbed it at the end. Um, but then I came back and won in 2011, 12, I flubbed it again in 13 on, on television. It was the one year they, they did a really nice package show and I, I, I lost in the end. But then I won this year, which was great, and uh, set a few records here. Um, and along the way, because it's all, it was all self-taught, I never had this skill growing up. It was something I learned and practiced. I needed to share that with people because people don't know about these techniques for the most part. And they didn't know about the memory championship and a lot of people don't know much about Alzheimer's. Um, so I, I decided to start this charity called Climb for Memory, which took advantage of something that I love, which is climbing, and meshed it with uh, educating people about memory and brain health and Alzheimer's as well. So uh, these are a couple of mountains uh, that I've climbed. This is Mount McKinley uh, a number of years ago and this is me on Mount Everest actually in 2011. I didn't make it to the top, I turned around, uh, but that's pretty close to the top. Um, so the four main things I try to do in my daily life for keeping a healthy brain are these four things right there. Train my brain or, or exercise my mind, that's the memory part that I do. Eat well, there's certain foods that I eat um, to help my brain. Stay physically fit for my body, right? It helps the brain as well. And being social, being active in the community, and interacting with others, that's very important as well. But I'm gonna focus on exercising your mind, the things I did here, and having a better memory, okay? So before I get into that, I kinda wanna do something with you guys, and it involves you having to close your eyes, okay? So trust me, just close your eyes. And um, what I'm gonna do is describe a scene, okay? And I just want you to picture it. Just sit there and imagine what I say, okay? So imagine you are in an open field, okay? And right in the middle there, it's a sunny day, green grass, 
is Albert Einstein, okay? And he's there, he's actually skateboarding on the grass, doesn't make sense, but you can picture this. He's kind of like gliding around on this, this skateboard, but it's not a skateboard, it's a, an acoustic guitar, okay? So he's on top of this acoustic guitar, kind of skateboarding around on top of this grass, okay? And off to the right of him is uh, Frankenstein, the monster, right? Arms outstretched, he's grunting a little bit, he's got bolts in his neck, and he's playing hacky sack, or kicking, a missile, a live missile, okay? Um, why, I don't know, but he just is doing this, okay? He's kicking around this missile next to Albert Einstein. And then off in the distance, we see a kangaroo hopping over, um, and he's freaking out, he's screaming, uh, because he's holding this wig in his little kangaroo arms, uh, and for some reason, it's, it's horrifying to him. And this kangaroo is screaming as it's bouncing along towards Albert Einstein and Frankenstein, okay? And then even further in the distance, we have Chewbacca from Star Wars. Big hairy monster doing his Chewbacca sound, and he is playing basketball with a fridge, okay? He's dribbling it, and he's slam dunking it into some imaginary hoop, okay? So we have Albert Einstein skateboarding on a guitar, Frankenstein kicking around a missile, kangaroo screaming at a wig, and uh, Chewbacca slam dunking a fridge. So you can open your eyes. Um, so what I had you memorize, congratulations, was this 28-digit number. Okay, you guys were like, what the? No. Uh, don't worry, that shouldn't make any sense, don't worry. Um, but the point I want to make is that if you actually had to memorize this number, it would be kind of difficult and not feel so good. It's, it kind of like, like hits against your brain. But what I had you guys picture, the, the, the scene, that's very easy. Like we're very good at, rem at memorizing or picturing things, fantastical things. I mean, none of those things could possibly happen. So in my number system, I have a system where I convert numbers to pictures. This is what I see when I see that number, and I split them up in sevens. Don't worry about that, the point is, that it's much easier to remember things, especially the complicated things that we have in our everyday lives, when we add meaning. So that's always the goal when you want to memorize, is to turn something difficult into something that your brain likes, a picture. And so there are really two steps to memorization, and I use these every time I memorize something. All the memory champions and competitive memorizers do this to do these incredible feats of memory. The first one is visualization. Okay, you wanna, what I just said, take what you're memorizing and turn it into a picture, okay? And not just any picture. So if you're thinking about pizza, right? You're memorizing pizza, you don't wanna just picture what pizza might look like. You wanna imagine the sound, right? Sizzling right out of the oven, or the flour, right? When you pick up the, the, the slice and you feel the flour in, in your hand on the dough. The color of the cheese, the, the, the taste, the steaminess, the hotness of it, right? That's all gonna make stuff more memorable. You also want to add emotion, right? Make it tap into your emotional senses as well. Make it erotic, right? These are the things we, memor we, re we remember when they're attached to sex or violence or humor. Um, you know, make it grotesque. The, the blood of the pizza is actually, uh, the, the tomato sauce is actually rat's blood or something. And, or maybe somebody's wearing a pizza sweater, right? These things will make your, your things that you're memorizing a lot more memorable. The second thing is storage, right? We have to put it somewhere where you can retrieve it efficiently later, and that's really the key. And, and there are techniques that are thousands of years old that we've, we just don't use anymore. Why? Because art of memory, is, 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 it's lost. It's a lost art. We have phones, we have computers that do that for us. Um, but how this works is you have to think of when you memorize, the typical person doesn't actively try to store it somewhere. Right? You just kind of look at something, maybe repeat it, and then hope that it's there. And then later on when you're searching for it, maybe it comes to you, maybe it doesn't. It's kind of like, uh, you know, just luck of the draw. So we need to have a technique to actively store that stuff knowingly in a place where we can retrieve it. So think of it like a computer, right? You, you don't just press save. You actually have to give it a file name and put it in a directory so you know which directory to pull it out of when you want it. We gotta do that with our brains. So, the technique is called the journey method or memory palace, Roman room method. These are all different names for the same thing. And what it is is you take a familiar place like your house or your office or the park that you walk in every day and 
that's because that's something you know, you have it already memorized, you can walk through it. Our brains are very good at spatial information. And you choose a specific path in that place with different stops along the way. So maybe it's your house, you start at your front door, that's the first place, then you walk in, inside, that's the second, then you go each room. Those would all be different places along a path. And what you do is you imagine the pictures of whatever you're memorizing at each of those locations along the way. And that preserves the order and gives it structure. So when you're later on going to memorize something and then recall it, you say, okay, I put it in my house, I'm at my front door, and then there's the first image waiting for you, which you've imagined at each of the locations, right? You have it interact with that environment. Sounds like a lot of work to just memorize something, but it's actually just taking advantage of what our brains are naturally good at. And it's actually quite fun and easy as opposed to just looking at something and rotely memorizing, right? So here we have a little path around the house and some awkward images, right? Um, okay, so we're gonna memorize something. This list looks kind of weird. It's not really a list of words or, or phrases, but it'll all make sense in the end. Okay, just trust me, just listen to me, and you will be memorizing this list. So what we need to do is find our journey. Uh, and we're gonna share our first journey together. We'll use this stage, this theater, okay? So we have 10 items, and um, you, know, you might wanna put one item at each of the locations, so we need 10 locations, but we can do better. We can save a bit of real estate by pairing up two terms in one location, so that way we only need five, okay? So what we'll do is just, we'll, I'll take the space and we'll find five places. So let's make this center stage the first place of our journey, okay? The second one will be uh, these chairs and the table. The third could be the screen. The fourth could be the band. And then the fifth could be kind of the front row uh, of the audience here, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, just there's a little, uh, little loop there, okay? So the first two things we have are rest, the word rest, and canine, okay? So we have to come up with a picture for that and place it right here. So I'm gonna picture, ima well imagine this, that I'm here giving a speech to you and suddenly I'm, I'm like, guys, I'm really tired, I'm gonna keep talking to you but I'm just gonna rest down. So I, I get down and I lay down, I put on some pajamas and here I am just laying down, resting giving you my speech, okay? So there I am, resting. When suddenly a dog, a canine, I think of a German Shepherd, because of a canine unit, um, comes out of nowhere, rabid dog, super angry, drooling, but he's only got two legs. For some reason, he's got two legs, okay? But he comes and he, is, he just attacks me. So you just suddenly see me rolling around with this angry dog, tattered clothes flying everywhere, maybe even a bit of blood, if you wanna go that grotesque route to, to remember that. Okay, so we have rest and the canine, okay, with two legs. Then we have Kanchen, Jenga, and Yahtzee, all right? So we're over here, this is our next location, and we're gonna picture the first one. So imagine Jackie Chan is at this table, okay, the action stunt man, movie star, and he's playing a game of Jenga, right? The tower blocks, he's trying to pull out very carefully one of these blocks. And, um, what we all want to know, this is the burning question in all of your minds, is can Jackie Chan play Jenga? Is he any good at it, right? We're burning to know, is, is that thing going to topple or not? Uh, so we ask ourselves, can Chan Jenga? Can he? Can he do it? Yes, he can. And he pulls it out and he says Yahtzee in, in success. He pulls out one of the most difficult pieces and it doesn't crumble and he puts it on top, all right? So can Chan Jenga and Yahtzee. And then we have the next place, which is the screen, right? We have the next two items, make a loo and show you, all right? So make a loo, I picture uh, a man making a toilet or in, a, a loo, right? If we're gonna speak in British, right? So <laughs> there's a porcelain toilet being chipped away at and it's, this man is making a loo right in front of us. Um, and he's so proud of it that he just wants to show you. He's like, let me show you, let me show you. Um, it's, it's amazing, please come and, and let me show you. But it's not just any guy, it's actually Tony Montana from uh, Scarface, okay? And he's got that really heavy Cuban Miami accent, okay? So he's saying, let me show you, man, let me show you, right? So show you, right? So it's show you, but with a little bit of an accent, right? So he's making a loo and he's showing you. All right, then we go to the band over here. We have the next two, which is Dollar Carry and Man Who Flew. So imagine there's a stack of dollar bills really high, 
and some guy comes over and he just starts piling them on his back. He's going to do a dollar carry. And he takes those dollar bills and carries them down the stage. And at the end, he just flies away. It's totally bizarre, but he is a man who flew, right? He, man who flew. So the dollar carry, right? Carry the dollars, and then he flew away, the man who flew. Finally, we're down here, okay? These are the last two words. And we have mango, par, bat, and Anna burning. So imagine that we have, there's a mango right there on the floor, and someone's coming up to play golf with it, to get par, right? But they're not using a golf club, they're using a baseball bat, all right? So it's a mango, par, bat. And the person doing it is Anna Kornikova, the, the very pretty blonde um, tennis star. Here she is in her tennis attire, and uh, she's about to mango par bat, but her hair is on fire. She's burning alive while she does that. It's, it's horrible, but I mean, we're just, we're just watching her do this. She wants to play golf instead. Okay. So Anna is burning. Anna burning. Okay. So uh, we had the rest and the canine. Um, here we had Kanchen Jenga um, and Yahtzee, he gets it. Then we had the make a loo show you. Then we had the dollar carry, man who flew. And down here we had Mango Parbat and Anna Corn Curva burning, right? So if I could get the slide to go back one, there we go. Let's see if we know that together. So it's a bit, it's, I gave you guys harder ones. Usually I just do a list of words, but I wanted to do something a little more because you guys are special. Um, and you'll understand what that is in a second, but let's see if we can do it together, okay? So what was here? What were the words? Rest and, and canine, right? And then what do we have over here? Kanchen Django, this sounds so good, and Yahtzee. And then what did we have here? Make a loo and show you. And over here? Dollar carry and man who flew. And then down here, this one was a tricky one. Mango par bat. Very good, very good. Okay, so what in God's name was that? Well, I just taught you the 10 highest mountains in the world, right? So, and not many people know that, so that's very good. And they're hard words because they're Tibetan, Nepalese in, in root, some of them. So rest, and so some of them are way off or, or kind of sound like it, but you'll understand why. Uh, it's just you want a trigger to get the word. So we had rest, which is ever rest. K2, right? We had the canine with two legs. Okay, then we had Kan Chen Jenga. That one's a good one because it sounds exactly like it. Um, Lotsi, Yahtzee, it's the same sound, just with an L. Uh, then we had Makalu or Makalu, you can say it either way. Choyu, okay. Uh, then we had um, Dalagiri, which was Dollar Carry, Dollar Carry, so you can say it like that, Dollar Carry. Manuslu, Manuflu, Manuflu. And then Nanga Parbat and Annapurna, Annapurna. So good job. You now know the 10 highest mountains in the world. Um, and try it, think about it. Later in the day, you'll just think about it, just picture the stage, and you'll still have those images there. It's really impressive. So uh, memory is very important to me. I think you guys should have it uh, in your mind as something important that's as well. So please value your mind. Um, try these techniques when you go to the, the grocery store. Try to remember all your items by picturing something in your house. And uh, thank you.